15,000 likes. Jesus Christ, the community has spoken. The Neat Mike support group has spoken. The degenerates have spoken. I guess you guys want me to make more of these. So you guys know me, and you know that I'm not somebody that asks for likes. That being said, I use likes to indicate if a video is good or not. And when a video gets 15,000 likes, that's good. You're darn right, that's good. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you guys another story. I know you want the drugs, the sex, the drunk stories, but we have got to get there by going through adolescent Mike. We've got to get through puberty before we start talking about the real, the real like dirty stuff. The stuff that could make it onto TMZ if I had a few more subscribers. So I want to start off the new year right. 2017 Mike, 2017 Neat Mike. It's a brand new year. It's a brand new Neat Mike. I'm going to be even neater than last year. And let's start this off with a story about me basically being a mob boss and almost getting expelled from school. I just want to clarify before this, this is 100% fucking true, I swear to God. I want you to picture a little neat Mike, just a little schoolboy kid, just your everyday normal middle schooler. I mean, I got some okay grades, I liked goofing off, I masturbated during recess, I cheated on some tests. There wasn't really anything unique about me. I was a little bit of a punk kid though. I never really dealt drugs or anything because I thought it was too dangerous, but I always had this mentality in middle school that, you know, the drug dealers, they were making some good money, man. Like, I could see myself doing something similar. This story starts off in the most basic way that you could possibly imagine. One day, I'm just minding my own business outside of a class. I'm trying to flirt with some 8th grade hoes. And then our middle school janitor started walking by with some big black bag over his shoulder. I know what you're thinking, Mike. It's just a bag of garbage. He's a janitor. This story is boring as fuck. Why don't you get to the good stuff? Slow down there, sport. Let me describe to you my janitor from middle school. Because this dude was fucking nuts. Picture like your stereotypical serial killer janitor from some horror movie. This dude had like long straggly hair. Nobody really knew him. He didn't talk to anybody. And if you ever made like awkward eye contact with him, he would just kind of like mumble some shit. You know, maybe I'm walking through the hallway and he's walking the opposite way and I just kind of glance at him and he goes, Rinse out and save my phone to fucking show. I would just look away and ignore the dude. Basically, everybody ignored this dude. He was psycho. We used to make jokes about one day he would be the dude coming into school and shooting the place up. Well, anyways, I was in seventh grade at the time and I'm still talking to this eighth grade girl. We're kind of hitting it off. You know, I'm making her laugh and I see this janitor walking out with this big black bag over his shoulder. Now, when you see a janitor that looks like the one that worked at my middle school carrying a big black bag over his shoulder, you assume there's a 90% chance that there's a fucking body in there. You just have to assume that there's a body in there. So me being a genius, I tell this girl, I'm like, holy shit, do you think he finally killed somebody and he's carrying out a body? And she's just like, oh my God, I don't know. So I told this girl, I was like, hey, we should follow him. We should see if he's got a dead body around his shoulder. Let's see if he dumps a body out. And she's just like, oh, no, okay. So we start following behind him until we get behind the school. And he just throws this big black bag into the dumpster behind the school. So the janitor just walks inside or some shit. I don't really remember. But we start walking outside towards this dumpster. And we just casually take a look at the bag. So the first thing I do is try and pick this up out of the dumpster. And it's like one pound. So obviously at this point I realize that it's not a body unless the dude like burnt him and put the ashes in some giant bag and threw it in there. But I don't give a shit about ashes. Nobody cares about a body if it's made into ashes. I need some bloody cut up corpse if I'm gonna make the national news. But anyways, I'm curious enough to open this bag and I fucking hit the jackpot. What is the one thing that would have been better than a dead body? Fucking lunch tickets. I know a lot of you younger folk are like, oh, Mike, what the fuck are lunch tickets, man? Did you go to school in the 30s in Nazi Germany? Back in the day at my middle school, we used to have literal tickets that we would cash in for some lunches. It was ghetto as fuck, I know. But anyways, one of these lunch tickets is one entire meal, and it costs like three bucks a ticket to get. There are thousands of them in this bag, and they're all just single lunch tickets. Like, I had no idea they just threw these things away when we cashed them in. I mean, literally thousands of dollars worth of lunch tickets. I could repeat middle school for 50 years and eat for free every single year. So the next week I'm cashing in these lunch tickets. I'm eating for free. I'm kind of a baller and I haven't really told anyone other than some close friends. So then I start giving my close friends lunch tickets so they're eating for free and all of a sudden people are looking at me like a fucking billionaire and my table just essentially eats for free. Well shit, word got out. People were coming up to me asking if they could buy some lunch tickets from me for cheaper than the school sold them to them. So here's the point in the story where 7th grade Neat Mike starts turning into a little bit of a mob boss. 
I'm dealing lunch tickets to people for less than they're paying. So little Timmy going to school, getting $20 from his dad for lunch money, is buying the tickets for cheaper, and then he's saving the rest of the money that he doesn't spend. I don't know what little Timmy is spending the rest of his money on. I don't know if little Timmy is a fucking crack addict nowadays or what he did with that money. But all I know is I'm saving people money, and I'm making like $100 a month doing this. $100 a month to a fucking 7th grader? That shit turns you into a mafia overlord. All of a sudden, me and my friends have this whole operation going. We know our clients and we're selling lunch tickets to like 30 different people. We're making money and then all of a sudden I realized that that girl that I brought out to that dumpster that one day is kind of a liability. So I did what any 7th grader in my situation would have done. I went to her house and I fucking murdered her entire family. <laughs> I'm kidding. I think I wrote her some fucking gay ass note saying like, please don't tell anybody. And she was like, <laughs> okay. So my whole operation is tight. It's just a well greased machine, a money making machine. I'm becoming a millionaire, right? There's nobody who is going to find out. Well, the fucking bitch told on me. I wrote her a note and everything and she still told on me. I don't know if she's dead or what, because I haven't seen her in like seven years. But if I ever see her, I'm gonna fucking break her knees. I'm kidding. Jesus Christ. I'm not that hard. I mean, if I ever saw her again and she was still cute, I would be hard in a different way. Anyways, I don't even know who she told, but she told somebody higher up. Or maybe she told a friend who told a friend who told somebody that was higher up. Anyways, one day I'm just minding my own business. I'm sitting in science class, learning about volcanoes, playing with my ball sack or something. I don't really remember. But I remember our assistant vice principal walking in and asking for me. Ugh, man. I knew I was fucked. The people that knew what I was doing in that class knew that I was fucked. So this assistant vice principal is escorting me to the principal's office down the hall. She's got some real fake ass smile with me doing some small talk. When a teacher has small talk with you in middle school and she's got some fake smile while she's walking you to the principal's office, she knows she's about to bend you over and fuck you. I swear it's just like a requirement for principals. They're like, do you get impossibly happy when you bend over middle schoolers and fuck them? Oh yes, I love to do that. So we get to the principal's office and they sit me down. And the very first thing that this principal says to me, how are things, my Mike, what the fuck do you mean, how are things? Oh, they're fabulous. I'm having like three wet dreams a week, you know, I've got straight C's in all my classes. Thank you for asking. And then the very next thing he says, we're changing our lunch system over to cards now. No fucking joke. I was the sole reason my entire school moved from lunch tickets to like some credit card system. I don't know how much money it was to get all these card scanners and everything set up, but I'm assuming they spent thousands of dollars. If they spent thousands of dollars to prevent me from selling black market lunch tickets, that means that I was costing this goddamn school thousands of dollars. Oh my God, I felt like a boss. I didn't even care that I was about to get molested in the principal's office. I didn't know who the guy from Breaking Bad was at the time, but I felt like the goddamn dude from Breaking Bad. This was my school. I think I told him I might have found some extra lunch tickets, which is highly under-exaggerating considering the fact that I had an entire compartment in my backpack dedicated to extra lunch tickets. I would carry around three, four hundred lunch tickets at a time. I was just as edgy in middle school as I am now on my YouTube channel. You know, I'm fucking edgy. So then the principal starts getting irritated with me. You realize that we can take legal action in this situation. And then I'm sweating my ass off now. This is real. Your parents would have to pay for all the lunches you've stolen from us. And then he starts threatening me, saying that if this was the wrong situation, I could go to juvie. And then I had one of those situations where your entire life just flashes before your eyes. I remembered the old Mike. I remembered the old neat Mike. The neat Mike that liked going to the skate park. That liked hitting on the eighth graders. The old neat Mike that just wanted to play hopscotch. Actually, that, that probably... That's probably a few years before that. I wasn't that much of a fucking loser. But then I saw what I had become. I was some big-time middle school mob boss. I started talking with an Italian accent. <laughs> All right, obviously this is dramatized. I did not have an Italian accent. But yeah, my middle school teacher called my parents. I got in a shit ton of trouble. We had some credit card system at my school for the rest of the time I was there. And fucking everyone knew it was because of me. To be honest, I probably made like two or three hundred dollars over the course of a few months doing this. So to be like yelled at by my parents and yelled at by the principal and all that shit, it's honestly worth it considering the fact that I still had the money. I guess the moral of the story is dealing drugs it really isn't that bad. I should have been dealing drugs. I mean, you gotta do this stuff while you're a kid and you can get away with this kind of stuff. Like, damn, dude, I wouldn't do it now, but like, if I could go back to middle school, I'd be dealing meth. Call me Neat Walter Mike.
I guess I'm special because I treat my subscribers differently and I treat them like real people. Shut the fuck up.